Welcome back. It's time now to take a look at the top business stories. Our Investments becomes the largest shareholder in Glencore's IPO. UAE attends G20 Sherpa meeting in Paris. And South Korean Parliament approves free trade bill with EU. Let's look at the stock markets first. Both the DFM and the ADX ended the trading week in the red. The DFM lost 0.7% to close at 1,607 points. DP World, for instance, lost 1.5%. Drake & Skull was down 1%. Even more so, Imar Properties, a heavyweight on the DFM, its shares dropped 1.5%. And Dubai Islamic Bank lost 0.9%. Arab Tech, on the other hand, gained 0.7%. Aramex was up 1.1%. The Dubai financial market was 0.8%. And Do was up 0.3%. One of the best performers was Global Investment House with a plus of 4.6%. 82 million shares were traded, valued at 123 million dirhams. And over in the capital, the ADX lost slightly by 0.1% to close at 2,697 points. The real estate sector lost the most, with Alder Properties losing 2.5% and Sura Real Estate closing down 1.4%. The banking sector was mixed. Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank was up 0.4%, as was Bank of Sharjah with 0.6%. National Bank of Abu Dhabi, however, lost 0.4%. And National Bank of Fujairah lost 1.1%. 1 .1%. Energy company Taka fell 0.7% and 71 million shares were traded on the exchange, valued at 113 million dirhams. And let's now take a look at the GCC markets, which ended mainly lower today. To talk a bit more about the events of the day, we're now joined by financial analyst Bruce Powers. Welcome to the show, Bruce. Thank you, Linda. It's big rate decision day in Europe today. The ECB is holding its monetary meeting. The Bank of England is also. What are you expecting of their monetary policy in the months to come, looking at the end of the year? Well, it's certainly expected that by the end of the year we'll see higher rates. The question now is really when that might happen. Uh, most economists seem to feel that the European Central Bank could start raising rates by June, maybe even July. And the rates will need to go up in order to help uh, calm inflation. In the, in the Eurozone, inflation last month was about 2.8%, which is about a two-and-a-half-year two high, which is pretty much before the financial crisis hit. In the UK, we're seeing t inflation twice the uh, target that is set by the central bank. So we have inflation signs, but apparently not enough yet for the central banks to feel they have to raise rates. Now, one of the things that seem that may help is that commodities, some commodities anyway, are starting to show signs of weakening. So that could diminish uh, the pressure and maybe give the banks a little bit more time before they start to raise their benchmarks. Looking at the U.S., we have the non-farm payrolls data out on Friday. What are you expecting from that? Well, the expectations for non-farm payrolls in the U.S. are 185,000, which is down from 216,000 previously. We also have unemployment being reported, which is expected to be the same at 8.8%. So nothing too earth-shattering there, nothing too surprising. If anything, a little bit on the weak side. Uh, how the market is going to perceive this remains to be seen if it does come in lower. Um, a previous number, I, for, I forget the specifics of that number, but it's a less followed number, came out earlier in the week showing uh, uh, payrolls going down. So the expectations are down and the market is reacting negatively uh, so far. We'll see how this turns out. Thanks for coming in. See you next week. Thank you. And now to our top stories. Abu Dhabi's Arbor Investments has committed to being the largest investor in top commodity trader Glencore International's 11 billion US dollar share offering. The IPO will be the world's largest this year, with ABBA, majority owned by Abu Dhabi's international petroleum investment company, investing up to $1 billion. US dollars. It will initially invest $850 million as Glencore's largest cornerstone investor and another $150 million during the subscription process. Altogether, Glencore aims to raise as much as $11 billion in a dual listing on the London and the Hong Kong stock exchanges. ABBA's chairman, Kadim Al-Kubaisi, told a local paper that ABBA intended to explore areas of cooperation between the two cup firms. Glencore controls huge amounts of commodities such as zinc, copper, lead, alumina and coal. The UAE discussed the global agenda with senior representatives at a preliminary G20 meeting in Paris on Wednesday. The event brought together the so-called Sherpas, the senior representatives from each G20 country who lead their government's preparations for the G20 summit in November in Cannes. 
Some of the topics discussed were the state of the world economy, energy issues, trade, employment, climate, global governance, finance and development. The UAE was represented by the chairman of the Abu Dhabi Department of Economic Development, Nasser Souvedi, who said the group had made a lot of progress. He said he was able to share the UAE's perspective of a number of issues, especially water security, as a critical element to food security. Other topics of high on the agenda was that of the importance of maintaining the security of energy supply. The six countries making up the Gulf Corporation Council are set to more than double their combined current account surplus this year to about $292 billion, the Washington-based think tank Institute of International Finance forecast. The IIF on Wednesday published its first Arab World Report. Its projections are based on average oil prices of $115 per barrel for this year and $110 for 2012, up from $80 per barrel in 2010. Government spending in the GCC as a whole will increase by 25% this year, the IIF added. The International Monetary Fund sees the GCC's combined current account surplus increase even further from $136 billion in 2010 to $304 billion this year. And in our fast financial news, Ras Al Khaimah is looking to invest 100 million US dollars into its hotel and tourism industry over the next four years. According to the Emirates Tourism Authority, the initiative is in line to quadruple its visitor count. The Emirate wants tourism to account for 20% of its income by 2021. And after the break, we'll run you through what's making the headlines in international business today.